Hey guys, Mr. Cooney here with Act 3, Scene 2. So when we left off at the end of Scene 1, um, we had a really awkward conversation with the uh, handing back of the stuff, the post-breakup of Hamlet Ophelia and the King and Polonius are trying to decide what to do with Hamlet and the King mentions sending him off to England and Polonius mentions, oh, he's still in love with my daughter. And they just think, well, let's see what happens after he talks to his mom. So that plays on the way. Um, and scene two opens up with Hamlet talking to the players who we've seen he's been very close to. And so we presume he's gonna try to have some control over the direction of this play, right? Here we go. Speak the speech, I pray you, as I pronounced it to you, trippingly on the tongue. But if you mouth it, as many of your players do, I had as lief the town crier had spoke my lines. <laughs> Nor do not saw the air too much with your hand, thus, but use all gently. For in the very torrent, tempest, and as I may say, whirlwind of your passion, you must acquire and beget a temperance that may give it smoothness. Mm -hmm. Oh, it offends me to the soul to hear a robustious, periwig-pated fellow tear a passion to tatters, mm -hmm. to very rags, to split the ears of the groundlings, who for the most part are capable of nothing but inexplicable dumb shows and noise. <laughs> I would have such a fellow whipped for or doing termagant. It out Herod's Herod. <laughs> Pray you avoid it. I warrant, Your Honour. You be not too tame neither, but let your own discretion be your tutor. Suit the action to the word, the word to the action. Famous line. With this special observance, that you o'erstep not the modesty of nature, for anything so overdone is from the purpose of playing, whose end, both at the first and now, was and is to hold as t'were the mirror up to nature, to show virtue her own feature, scorn her own image, the very age and body of the time, his form and pressure. Now this overdone, or come tardy off, though it makes the unskilful laugh, cannot but make the judicious grieve, the censure of the which one must in your allowance or weigh a whole theatre of others. <laughs> oh, there be players that I have seen play, and heard others praise, and that highly, not to speak it profanely, <laughs> that neither having the accent of Christians, nor the gait of Christian, pagan, nor no man, have so strutted and bellowed that I have thought some of nature's journeymen had made men, and not made them well. They imitated humanity so abominably. I hope we have reformed that indifferently with us, sir. Oh, reform it altogether. And let those that play your clowns speak no more than is set down for them. <laughs> for there be of them that will themselves laugh to set on some quantity of barren spectators to laugh too, though in the meantime some necessary question of the play be then to be considered. That's villainous, and shows a most pitiful ambition in the fool that uses it. <laughs> Go. <laughs> Make you ready. Okay, so basically that gives an opportunity for Shakespeare to kind of take his... Uh, fill Hamlet's shoes with his directing feet, right? Or the other way around, however you want to think about it. And he gets to give some advice on how acting should be done. It's kind of ahead of his time, right? Because in Shakespeare's time, people would overact. You have to overact everything to some degree in a live play, right? But things have changed since then. So, so Hamlet, Shakespeare through the character, actual character Hamlet seems to be suggesting something different than overacting and melodramatizing everything. What is that? And why would Hamlet be interested in a play coming across in the way that he seems to be asking? Think about that. All right, so players leave, uh, enter Polonius, Rosencrantz, and Guildenstern. Uh, now, my lord, will the king hear this piece of work? And the queen, too, and that presently. Bid the players make haste. Aye, my lord. Will you two help to hasten them? We will, we will my lord. Oh, Horatio. Here. Okay, so we're coming up on the play pretty soon here. Pretty intense moment. And now he's having this conversation with Horatio kind of off to the side before things get going. Sweet Lord, at your service. Horatio, thou art e'en as just a man as e'er my conversation coped with. A... Oh, my dear. Lord. Nay, do not think I flatter. For what advice... Now let's stop. I know I'm stopping a lot. I'm sorry. But uh, let's think about how Horatio might contrast Hamlet's uh, other friends. Right, he's going to express some emotions toward Horatio about how he feels toward him as a friend here. See if you can interpret. Advancement may I hope from thee that no revenue hast but thy good spirits to feed and clothe thee. Why should the poor be flattered? No, let the candid tongue lick absurd pomp and crook the pregnant hinges of the knee where thrift may follow fawning. Dost thou hear? 
Since my dear soul was mistress of her choice, and could of men distinguish, her election hath sealed thee for herself. For thou hast been as one in suffering all that suffers nothing. A man that fortunes, buffets, and rewards has ta'en with equal thanks. And blessed are those whose blood and judgment are so well commingled that they are not a pipe for fortune's finger to sound what stop she please. Give me that man that is not passion's slave, and I will wear him in my heart's core. I, in my... By passion, he really means uh, easy emotions like greed, right? He's not going to give in to his own passionate interests. What could he mean about Horatio in contrast to his other quote-unquote friends? My heart of heart, as I do thee. <clears throat> Something too much of this. There is a play tonight before the king. One scene of it comes near the circumstance which I have told thee of my father's death. I prithee, when thou seest that act afoot, even with a very comment of thy soul, observe my uncle. If his occulted guilt do not itself unkennel in one speech, it is a damned ghost that we have seen, and my imaginations are as foul as Vulcan's stiddy. Give him heedful note, for I, mine eyes, will rivet to his face, and after, we will both our judgments join to censure of his seeming. Well, okay, so he's basically telling Horatio what's going on there. I've always found this, once again, to be one of those places that almost doesn't make sense. Or he's purposely leaving out some information, because we don't have... We're not privy to any dialogue in which Hamlet has let Horatio know exactly what went on. Is he assuming that Horatio and Marcellus overheard his conversation with the ghost? Because he certainly didn't act like he thought that they had overheard his conversation with the ghost when they talked after. He just said, swear, swear, right? That you will not, will never let anybody know what went on here. Never let anybody know what went on here, what was said. So it's kind of ambiguous, I guess. All right, anyway, moving on. Oh, my Lord. If he steal aught the whilst this play is playing and scape detecting, I will pay the theft. They are coming to the play. I must be idle. Get you a place. Okay, Danish march, a flourish. Enter King, Queen, Polonius, Ophelia, Rosencrantz, Guildenstern, all the other lords attending, all the important people. Everybody's here. They're in this theater uh, to watch the play, right? So this dialogue that you hear is kind of in front of everybody, which is gonna make parts of it kind of weird and awkward. How fares our cousin Hamlet? Excellent, faith of the chameleon's dish. I eat the air. Promise, Cram. You cannot feed capons, so. I have nothing but this answer, Hamlet. These words are not mine. No, nor mine, now. <laughs> <laughs> my lord, you played once at the university, you say? That I did, my lord. I was accounted a good actor. And what did you enact? I did enact Julius Caesar. I was killed in the Capitol. Brutus killed me. <laughs> it was a brute part of him to kill so capital a calf there. <laughs> Be the players ready. Aye, my lord. They stay upon your patience. Come hither, my good hand. Sit by me. No, oh, good mother. Here's metal more attractive. Oh, oh, my lord, you mark that. Lady, shall I lie in your lap? No, my lord. I mean my head upon your lap. Aye, my lord. You think I meant country lap? I think nothing, my lord. That's a fair thought to lie between maid's legs. What is my lord? Nothing. You are merry, my lord. Who are? I my Yeah, this is getting really awkward. And Hamlet, is he acting crazy? Uh, is he trying to embarrass her? He's trying to make a spectacle of himself. I don't know, but it's weird. Very uncomfortable. Oh, God, you're any jig maker. What should a man do but be merry? For look you, how cheerfully my mother looks. And my father died within two hours. So long. Nay, then let the devil wear black, for I'll have a suit of sables. Oh, heavens, died two months ago and not forgotten yet. Then there's hope a great man's memory may outlive his life half a year. <laughs> but by our lady, he must build churches then, or else shall he suffer not thinking on with the hobby horse, whose epitaph is for oh, for oh, the hobby horse is forgot. I see what you did there, Hamlet. Do you guys see what he did there? Oh, look how cheerfully my mother looks. And my father died within two hours. Ophelia says, nay, twice two months, which is kind of weird because I thought it was two months, not twice two months, but anyway. And him says, oh, so long? Well, 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 well. See if you can kind of interpret and explain, uh, you know, what kind of, it's actually a, somewhat of a poetic device going on there, if you think about it, to, to, uh, to expose uh, a certain attitude by someone. Moving on. 
Okay, so a dumb show um, is almost exactly what it sounds like. Uh, some characters, uh, actors resembling characters of the play that they're about to watch would come out and kind of go through a short uh, paraphrase, uh, summarization of the plot of the play. And that way, especially the less well-read members of the audience will be able to understand what goes on in a full long version of the play. It's like a spark notes up front. What means this, my lord? Okay, uh, in some versions of the play, Hamlet kind of narrates over that. He didn't hear, so pause me if necessary to read through that if he didn't just know. I'm kidding, I wasn't really paused. <laughs> okay, did you read through that? Um, it is kind of remarkably resembling uh, a story that's pretty familiar to us here. So you might imagine Claudius might be already squirming in his seat a little bit, especially when the full version starts to play out. Harry, this is Mitching Malico. It means mischief. We like this show imports the argument of the play. Uh, we shall know by this fellow the players cannot keep counsel. They'll tell all. Will he tell us what this show meant? I only show that you'll show him. Be not you ashamed to show. He'll not shame to tell you what it means. You are naught. You are naught. I'll mark the play. Naughty. You're naughty. For us... And for our tragedy, here stooping to your clemency, we beg your hearing patiently. Is this a prologue or the posy of a ring? It is brief, my lord. As woman's love. Ooh, ouch. Okay, <laughs> so the play begins. We got a player king and queen it's gonna get a little bit long here i apologize but full 30 times hath phoebus cart gone round neptune's short watch and tell us orbit ground and 30 dozen moons with borrowed sheen about the world have times 12 30s been sick love our hearts and high men did our hands unite commutual in most sacred plan so many journeys may the sun and moon make us again count o'er ere love be done. But woe is me, you are so sick of late, so far from cheer and from your former state, that I distrust you. Yet though I distrust, discomfort you, my lord, if nothing must. For women's fear and love... Might note to yourself that the word distrust, the way they're using it, means feel concerned for. Okay, it's pretty different from how we would read that. Love holds quantity in neither ought or in extremity. Now what my love is, proof hath made you know. And as my love is sized, my fear is so. Where love is great, the littlest doubts are fear. Where little fears grow great, great love grows there. I must leave thee, love, and shortly too. My operant powers their functions leave to do. And thou shalt live in this fair world behind, honored, <coughs> beloved, and happily one as kind. For husband shall pass. Oh, confound the rest! Oh. Such love must needs be treason in my breast. In second husband, let me be a cast. None wed the second. 
But who killed the first? What? Wormwood. Wormwood. <laughs> so the player king is relating how he is getting old, right? He's losing his faculties, and he will be, he will probably pass on soon. And then the player queen is seems to be uh, expressing reluctance to take a new husband anytime soon. That second marriage move, our base respects of thrift, but none of love. A second time I kill my husband dead when second husband kisses me in bed. How's Gertrude I, feeling? I do believe you think what now you speak. But what we do determine oft we break. Purpose is but the slave to memory of violent birth but poor validity. Which now, like fruit unripe, sticks on the tree but fall unshaken when they mellow be. Most necessary it is that we forget to pay ourselves what to ourselves is debt. What to ourselves in passion we propose, the passion ending, doth the purpose lose. The violence of either grief or joy, their own enactures with themselves destroy. Where joy most revels, grief doth most lament, grief, joy. Joy grieves on slender accident. This world is not for I, nor tis not strange that even our loves should with our fortunes change. For tis a question left us yet to prove whether love lead fortune or else fortune love. <laughs> the great man down, you mark his favorite, flies. The poor advance makes friends of enemies. And hitherto doth love on fortune tend. For who not needs shall never lack a friend. And who in want a hollow friend doth try, directly seasons him his enemy. But, orderly to end where I begun, our wills and fates do so contrary run that our devices still are overthrown, our thoughts are ours, their end none of our own. So think thou wilt no second husband wed, but die thy thought when thy first lord is dead. Nor earth do me give food, nor heaven light, sport and repose lock from me day and night, to desperation turn my trust and hope, an anchor's cheer in prison be my scope, each opposite that blanks the face of joy, meet what I would have well, and it destroy, both here and hence, pursue me lasting strife, if once a widow ever I be wife. If she should break it now, is deeply sworn. Sweet, leave me here a while, my spirits grow dull, and fain I would beguile the tedious day with sleep. Sleep rock thy brain, and never come a mischance between us twain. Uh, Madam, I like you this play. The lady doth protest too much, methinks. Oh, but she'll keep her word. <laughs> Let's think real hard about that exchange between Hamlet and his mother. Very famous line there. The, the lady doth protest too much, methinks. It makes sense that Gertrude would say that if you think about it, right? Okay. Long scene, but we're getting near the end here. Have you heard the argument? Is there no offense in do but jest poison in jest no offense in the world what do you call the play poison the mousetrap marry how tropically this play is the image of a murder done in vienna gonzago is the duke's name his wife baptista you shall see a nom is a knavish piece of work but what of that your majesty and we that have free souls it touches us not let the gold of jade wince our withers are unwrung This is one Lucianus, nephew to the king. You are as good as a chorus, my lord. Keep my hammer's yelling over the play. So you mistake your husbands. Begin, murderer. Part, leave that damnable faces and begin. Come, the croaking raven doth bellow for revenge. Fit a 
I'm agreeing. Confederate season, else no creature seeing. Thou mixture rank of midnight weeds collected with Hecate's ban thrice blasted, thrice infected. Thy natural magic and dire property on wholesome life usurp immediately. He poisons him in the garden for his estate. His name's Gonzago. The story is extant and written in very choice Italian. You shall see anon how the murderer gets the love of Gonzago's wife. Oh. 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 The king rises. What? Frighted with false fire. Affairs, my lord. Give her the plate. Give me some light! Away! I'd say that work. I let the stricken deer go weep, the heart ungalled play, for some must watch while some must sleep. So runs the world away. Would not this, sir? And a forest of feathers? If the rest of my fortunes turn Turk with me, with two provincial roses on my raised shoes, get me a fellowship in a cry of players, sir. Oh, for sure. A whole one eye. For thou dost know, O Damon dear, this realm dismantled was of Jove himself, and now reigns here a very, very peacock. Oh, <laughs> you might have right. Oh, good Horatio. I'll take the ghost word for a thousand pound. Didst perceive? Very well, my lord. Upon the talk of the poisoning. I did very well note him. Ah, 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 come, some music, come, the recorders. For if the king like not the comedy, why then, belike, he likes it not, paddy. Come, some music. My lord. Okay, so here comes Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. I think Hamlet's kind of had enough of. Um, Recorders, as in those wooden flute-ish kind of things that you played in uh, middle school and maybe grew to hate. Um, that's what those are there, and they would have been used, you know, very old instrument, would have been used for some music during the play. Anyway, he's joking around and saying some music, uh, but then something else is going to happen involving those here. If I'd take me a word with you. Sir, a whole history. The king, sir. Aye, sir, what of him? He's in his retirement, marvellous distempered. But with drink, sir. No, my lord, rather with choler. Your wisdom should show itself more richer to signify this to his doctor, for for me to put him to his purgation would perhaps plunge him into far more choler. Good my lord, put your discourse into some frame, and start not so wildly from my affair. I am tame, sir, pronounce. The queen, your mother, in most great affliction of spirit, hath sent me to you. You are welcome. Nay, good my lord, this courtesy is not of the right breed. If it shall please you to make me a wholesome answer, I will do your mother's commandment. If not, your pardon and my return shall be the end of my business. Okay, let me think to yourself at this point. Gildenstern is getting frustrated with uh, with Romeo, or excuse me, Romeo, that uh, with, with Hamlet that he's not being straightforward. He keeps being sarcastic and ironic and stuff and not straightforward, not wholesome. Gildenstern saying that, right? It's kind of ridiculous. Ironic. Sir, uh, I can't. So, what, my lord? Make you a wholesome answer. My wit's diseased. Crazy. But, sir, such answers as I can make you shall command, or rather, as you say, my mother. Therefore, no more but to the matter. My mother, you say. Then thus she says, your behavior hath struck her into amazement and admiration. Oh, wonderful son that can so astonish a mother. But is there no sequel at the heels of this mother's admiration? Impart. She desires to speak with you in her closet ere you go to bed. We shall obey were she ten times our mother. <laughs> Instead of just twice. That's a good one. Have you any further trade with us? My lord... You once did love me. So I do still by these pickers and stealers. Good my lord, what is your cause of distemper? You do surely bar the door of your own liberty if you deny your griefs to your friend? Sir, I lack advancement. Oh, how can that be? When you have the voice of the king himself for your succession in Denmark. Aye, sir, but while the grass grows, the uh, proverb is something musty. Oh, the recorder, let me see. To withdraw with you. Why do you go about to recover the wind of me as if you would drive me into a toil? Oh, my lord, if my duty be too bold, my love is too unmannerly. Uh, I do not well understand that. Will you play upon this pipe? The recorder. My lord, I cannot. I pray you, 
Believe me, I cannot. I do beseech you. No, no touch of it, my lord. It is as easy as lying. Govern these vintages with your finger and thumb. Give it breath with your mouth, and it will discourse most eloquent music. Look you, these are the stops. But these cannot I command to any utterance of harmony. I have not the skill. Why, look you now, how unworthy a thing you make of me. You would play upon me. You would seem to know my stops. You would pluck out the heart of my mystery. You would sound me from my lowest note to the top of my compass. And there is much music, excellent voice, in this little organ, yet cannot you make it speak. Blood! Do you think that I am easier to be played on than a pipe? Call me what instrument you will, though you can fret me, yet you cannot play upon me. That's just too good. You're going to play me? You're going to play me? You can't play the recorder, but you think you can play me. Oh, God bless you, sir. My lord, the queen would speak with you, and presently. Do you see yonder cloud that's almost in shape of a camel? Well, by the mass, it is like a camel indeed. Uh, Methinks it is like a weasel. It is bat like a weasel. Or like a whale. Very like a whale. Then I will come to my mother by and by. They fool me to the top of my bent. I will come by and by. I will say so. By and by is easily said. Leave me, friends. My lord. <sighs> Tis now the very witching time of night when churchyard yawn and hell itself breathes out contagion to this world. Now could I drink hot blood and do such bitter business as the day would quake to look on. Soft, now to my mother. So remember, they've set it up that he's going to have a talk with his mom after the play to see if they can finally figure out where he's coming from. And otherwise, they're going to send him off to England, right? Oh, heart, lose not thy nature. Let not ever the soul of Nero enter this firm bosom. Let me be cruel, not unnatural. I will speak daggers to her, but use none. My tongue and soul in this be hypocrites. How in my words some ever she be shent to give them seals. Never my soul consent. And that's the end of scene two. Lots of stuff going on. That was long. Okay. Uh, Seems to be coming up next.